loving the divine, first of all, as you say, you've never been, you know, that attracted by various images or stories. That's okay. When we talk about loving the divine, even those of us in a tradition where we may have images, it's not the image itself we love. It's the one whom the image is an image of. So for example, if I hand you a random picture of a random man torn out of a magazine, and I say, love him, well, of course, you're going to find it very hard to love a picture of a random man you don't know torn out of a magazine. But if I hand you a picture of your father, it's going to be very easy to love him because it's your dad. And so when we are using images, it's not that we love the image. It's that we love the one who it's an image of. And the image reminds us of who it's of. And that's what it's about. So if you're looking at a piece of paper and that piece of paper happens to be a photograph of your mother or your father, or someone else you love, through looking at that image, it's going to inspire loving you. But not because the piece of paper has inspired love, because the piece of paper has triggered within you a love that already exists for the person who it's a picture of. <clears throat> In the same way, the images only work when we already love the one it's an image of. So if you don't, no problem, don't worry. Here's how you love the divine. Do you love anyone? Is there someone you love? Great. Now, how long have you loved that person? Fantastic. How old are you? 34. Great. So let's say that you've consciously loved that person for 31, 32 years. Let's say that for the first couple of years, you were just sort of loving by instinct. 31, 32 years, you have consciously loved someone. How many times over... 31, 32 years, has the body of that person changed? There is no answer. The answer is constantly. The body is constantly changing. If you go back and you look at a picture of what that person looked like when you were a baby, and you look at what that person looks like now, they're going to be vastly different. The body continually changes. Skin cells are being sloughed off every day. Our organs are regenerating every seven, eight, nine years. Literally every seven, eight, nine years, you have a brand new body. So the body keeps changing. But you've loved them continually. It wasn't that you say, oh, but I loved that body better. You've loved them continually. And what that means is, what you love is content, not form. Now, you might also love their body. You might also say, oh, yeah, the body is beautiful. I love to hold their hands. I love to give them a hug or cry on their shoulder. But no matter how many times that body has changed, your love has stayed consistent, which means what you are loving is essence. What you're loving is content, not form. And the essence of everyone is divine. The core of everyone is divine. 
I could make it a little bit more visually morbid. Let's say we take this person you love and bear with me in the midst of this imagery, but it's powerful for a reason. We take this person you love and for whatever reason, tragically, God forbid, they have to have their hands amputated. Do you love them any less? Okay, then they have to have their arms amputated. Do you love them any less? Then they have to have their legs amputated. Do you love them any less? Now, we could go, again, as gruesomely morbid as this is, you could go slice by slice by slice through the torso, and there'd be no point at which you would say, okay, I no longer love them. Okay, the being I love no longer exists in this body in front of me. And what that means is that that which you love in them doesn't exist in the body. Otherwise, as we chopped off the body limb by limb, at some point you'd say, oh, now I no longer love them because what I loved has gone in that limb that's now been amputated. But what you love is spirit. What you love is soul. What you love is essence. It doesn't exist in the body. There's no part of that body that could be amputated that would make you say, ah, now I no longer love them. My love resided in that part of their body. Amazingly, when people develop dementia, and they're in t or they, they have a brain lesion, they get into an accident and their brain is damaged, their personality changes completely. Family still loves them. People who loved them still love them. It's not you have a new personality, I no longer love you. Literally, even the way that they act, the way they speak, the things they like, the things they don't like, what they, everything changes. We still love them. Which makes you realize that what you're loving isn't in anywhere in the body. It isn't anywhere in their brain. It isn't in how they behave. It isn't in what they say. You may prefer certain behaviors over others. You may prefer certain ways that they speak over others. But you love them regardless. What you love is soul. What you love is spirit. What you love is essence. doesn't matter what word we use. It's not a semantic issue. But you love that, that spirit of them, that isness of them. That's God. When we say the truth of who we are, the core of who we are, that spirit, that soul, that love, that truth is divinity. And when we agree that we're not going to fight on the semantics of it, that whether we call it God or we call it divinity or we call it soul or we call it spirit or we call it love or we call it truth or we call it essence, it doesn't matter. But that we're going to realize that we're all talking about the same thing. That isness, which is not your body, which is not your brain, which is not your thoughts, which is not your behaviors, but that just is. So if you can really love anyone, you're loving God. So don't worry. Yes, you're right. It's very abstract to just try to love God. Don't worry. Love someone. Love anyone. But love them so fully that when you're with them, do whatever you can to connect just to their essence instead of being focused on what they're doing or saying or how they're acting or how they're dressed or whether they gained or lost five pounds or whatever it may be. Try to allow yourself to just focus on that essence of them. And the beautiful piece of that is in order to connect with the soul of another being, you can only do it from the place of your soul. Thinking mind, judging mind, 
cannot connect to soul spirit consciousness. Intellect connects to, in, to intellect, body connects to body, we call it lust. Right? I mean, there's all the different connections we have body to body, brain to brain, thoughts to thoughts, behaviors to behaviors, preferences to preferences, right? We say, oh, we get along really well, we like the same things. Same value, same with great. Intellectually compatible. But in order to connect to the soul, only the soul can connect to the soul. So as you are connecting to the soul, spirit, essence, truth of another being, you're doing it from that place in you that is soul, spirit, essence, truth. And that's divinity connecting to divinity. When in India we fold our hands and we say namaste, it literally means the divinity within me is bowing to the divinity within you. The divine in me bows to the divine in you. So it's this constant remembrance. Divine in me bows to the divine in you. So begin with that. Begin with bowing to all. You don't have to bow to how they act, bow to how they speak, bow to anything about them other than the divine in them, from that place of the divine in you. And then love anyone fully, deeply, and you're loving God.